morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, once again, welcome to Tuesday Bible Talk Devotional. I pray once again that today something heard, something said, something felt will move us closer to the Lord and His Word and His will and His way. I know we've got a very busy day with the election and all that going on because we need to we need to watch and we need to pray. And then we need to watch and we need to pray and we need to come together and ask God to intercede on our behalf. So with that, dear gracious Father, God of heaven, God of provision, God of love, a God of order, Father, we seek your face, Lord. We seek your face in, in understanding that there's chaos. There are threats of violence. People are having to close their businesses because what should be a joyous occasion, an election is coming and, and whatever the results are, it doesn't seem that uh, anybody will really be happy with them, Father. I don't, I, don't, I don't know, Lord, but I think if we turn to you, we will find our peace. We will find our grace. We will find our place of, of contentment and know that whatever the results are, Lord, you're still in control, Father. Uh, I ask you to still our hearts, still our spirits, and let us let us faithfully move forward knowing that you are Lord and everything is all right. It is in Jesus' name that I pray in grace, I pray in love, and I pray in thanksgiving. Amen. Well, you, you know, um, once again, uh, we meet today and we just need a little small word sometimes. Sometimes a word we've heard many, many, many times, and it, it, I wanted to carry a little weight with this, something to help us get through the week. And, and this week, uh, I found a little scripture in the Beatitudes, and I want to just spend a little time because I know, like I said, we got a lot we got to get done. Okay? And it's in Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8, and this is the English Standard Version. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it'll be open. Uh, these verses of scripture are our guide as we seek to encounter Jesus. These aren't some blank verses of scriptures that we sit around and say, God, I want a car, and then look outside and think we're going to get a car. You know, uh, we go seeking that person that did us wrong when we were kids and we find them and we beat them up. It's, it's not that that thing. You know, it's, it's, it's asking God for his healing and his guidance, uh, seeking his love and his understanding and his discernment and and knocking on heaven's door, knocking on God's door and not I, I don't think any of us knock on a door. And stand outside. When the door is open, we're supposed to go in. And that's what God is saying. Knock. And the door will be open. But just because it's open doesn't mean anything happens if you don't go in. So I want to 
I want to take a few examples. Like I said, I'll be very brief today, but I want to take a few examples of what this scripture means to kind of better illustrate them. So, you know, if we go to Mark 10, 46 through 52, and I'm not going to read it, but it's the story of this guy. He's blind Bartimaeus. And blind Bartimaeus was on the roadside as Jesus was coming through. And, you know, a whole lot of hush got, oh, there he comes. And it was hush, hush. And blind Bartimaeus started yelling, master, master, hey, it's me over here. Hey. And they're saying, be quiet, be quiet. And he's like, no, because, see, if I don't ask, I can't get what I need. And he got the Lord's attention. And the Lord said, what can I do for you, son? He said, hey, hey. If it be your will, if you restore my sight, I sure would be grateful. So he asked, and it was given unto him. But he he asked. There were others who were hurting, who were in pain, who needed something from the Lord. But they stood back in awe of the Lord, not knowing how close he is to us, how much he wants to love us and give us and embrace us. So instead of asking the Lord, they just stood so they could say, I was there. Jesus is not a parade. He wants you to come close to him. Well, there's another one. Um, there was a, a, a man with a withered hand. And we don't think much of that scripture. But if, if you understand that, you know, if your, your right hand is withered and you can't use it, you're 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 kind of out of commission because, you know, one hand's your bathroom hand and the other hand is your hand of fellowship, the hand you do stuff with. Well, if you ain't got but one hand, then people don't want to fellowship with you because they know you got to use that as your bathroom hand, too. <clears throat> so. It was on a Sabbath and Jesus saw the man and we didn't real. We sometimes we read that scripture and then we don't realize how great. The work of God is because he healed the man's hand. He put that man back in the fellowship. He put the, him back in the graces. He made him acceptable to society again. And some of us need that. It's not a withered hand. It's a withered heart. It's a withered spirit. We've been torn up by life. We've been torn up by our actions. We've been torn up by our past. And we just need to go to Jesus and ask him to heal that withered part of us so he can put us back in the fellowship the right way and see that's what i mean by this is what god is talking about and when we seek <clears throat> in luke 19 1 through 19 we hear again jesus is passing through a place and the the greatest center of the sinners according to the jewish population was a tax collector and the head of the tax collectors is most definitely, he is the, you know, he is the head crook. And that's Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus said, you know what, I'm a, I'm a little guy. I'm short in stature. But see, he was sick. He heard Jesus was coming through. He said, I'm going to seek Jesus. How can I get to him? I can't get through the crowds. They don't like me anyway. They think I'm a crook. They don't want to come and see me when they pay their taxes. So I know they don't want me to be a part of this. I'm going to go a little bit ways off and I'm going to get up on a tree. I'm climbing up so I can seek Jesus. So I can see him and he can see me so he don't know what's in my heart. I, I have a, a zest for him. Regardless of what I do, regardless of what people say about me, I'm seeking the Lord. And if we know that story, we know the Lord. Because uh, the Lord approaches us if we'll open ourselves up to him. So there again, that was a seeking. And God said, you know, you come down from that tree. I got to go home with you and have dinner with you. And we know that through his actions, from his encounter with Christ, Zacchaeus was fully restored in life. If I've done any wrong, I'll give back multiple times of what I've taken. But I... Because I've encountered you, Lord, I want to be restored. How many of us are seeking the, the Lord with that zest, with that passion, so that we can be restored to our right place? 
in the eyes of God. Not in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God. And then there was a, there's another little scripture in Matthew uh, 9, 20 through 22. And there was a woman who had an issue of blood. And she had done everything she knew to do. Gone to every doctor, probably all the specialists, talked to her friends, probably used all the home remedies. She did everything. Isn't that some of us? Our lives are just out of whack. And we've done everything we knew to do. Everything people told us, and if you do that, and if you do that, and if you turn this way, and if you buy this special cloth, and you use this special oil, you know, everything we've heard about, everything we've thought about. But this woman said, I'm going to seek Jesus. I heard he was passing through. I'm going to seek Jesus. And she got close to him, but she couldn't get quite there. And in her face, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know everything's going to be all right. And it was. So, you know, we see what asking, we see what seeking will get you in terms of the of, of biblical terms. This is not some far off thing. God showed you right there in his word. What these will get for you. These people got healed. They got made whole. They got put back in the right place. In the place where they belong. According to what God had destined for them. And, and the last one is, is knock. You know who, who, who knocked on God's door? Well I, I can't exactly say somebody. Because see Jesus said. The son of man didn't have a place to lay his head. So there was no, no door to knock on per se. But I have an example that was in Mark 2, 4 and 5. And there was a man who was stricken and he had four friends. And the crowd around Jesus was so massive, they couldn't get near him. So they climbed up on the roof and opened up the roof and they lowered the man down in and see, that's knocking on Jesus' door. I don't care how many people are in my way. I don't care what the distractions are. I don't care who's trying to stop me. I'm going to get to the Lord. I'm getting to the door of the Lord. And they got to the door of the Lord. And Jesus said, because of your faith, talking about the faith of the friends, not the man laying down there, but he's going to be healed. But y'all going to be all right, too. That's, see, that's, that's what we need. And you know, with all this stuff going on with the election and the social injustice and everything we're dealing with, the jobs are failing and, you know, the bank accounts are getting low and things are looking tough and they stop the unemployment and there's no stimulus. And, you know, we're scratching our heads saying, well, you know, this is a state we've been in before, but we can make it because we've got God on our side. But see, we got to understand that this is these times when we can't let the distractions of the world keep us from getting to Jesus. We got to keep seeking the Lord. We got to keep asking the Lord. And we got to knock on the Lord's door. When, when everybody else has turned from us, God will open the door and let us in. And he will bless us and bless those with us because that's how gracious he is. Well, you know, I, I, I gave up. A couple of examples on both of those. But for the second example on this one, because I believe we all need to see ourselves in the scriptures, uh, I'm going to ask you, each of you sitting there, to insert your name, to insert your life into the circumstance and tell your story about how you asked the Lord, how you were seeking the Lord, how you knocked and waited for the door to open from the Lord, you know, and then ask yourself, what will I do to encounter Jesus? What, 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 what will I do that I might encounter Jesus? I mean, in the fullness of the Lord. Not not hear about him, not be close to him, but to truly encounter the Lord. And then say, what will I do when that happens? 
Because if you believe, if you've confessed in, with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you if you have not already, you will encounter the Lord. What are you going to do when you encounter? Are you going to stand back like a fan and cheer and ask for his autograph and go away and tell people, I saw the Lord? Or are you going to ask for something that he wants to give you? Are you going to stand in faith before him and, and confess your sins to the Lord so that you might be made whole? Are you going to let him put you back in the fellowship? What are you going to do when you encounter Jesus? That's a question I don't think we ask ourselves. We just move along, move along, move along in the knowledge of Jesus. We might have, we have faith in Jesus, but are we in, or are we expecting something? Are we expecting expecting an encounter with the Lord that will change our whole existence, change our lives, take our minds off the things of the world, and put our things on, mind on things above, good things, wonderful things, lovely things. So you know, for this little short lesson for today because of the circumstances of what's going on, but it doesn't have to be that. This, this is an everyday thing. But because this is an exceptional day, this is a very important day in, in the history of the U.S. I, that's what I consider it anyway. So I'm going to ask that we, we ask and we seek and we knock with faith, with patience, with the perseverance that we're supposed to have and watch and see what God does in each of our lives individually and in the life of his church collectively. That's, that's a very simple task. That's what God wants us to do. Before we run in the streets and start doing craziness, before we fall victims to our own actions, let's just stop and pray. Be still and know and ask and seek. And knock and the Lord will answer and everything that we consider not of God things that are out of a way he'll move them out of our path he'll move them out of our minds he'll move them out of our thinking he'll move them out of our hearts and let us have peace as we travel along this journey so folks I'm gonna tell you God is just waiting for you he's waiting to bless you he if you ask him, he's already got the answer. If you seek him, he's waiting on you so he can turn it around. And if he knock, if you knock on the door, you know, it's, it's already a jar. It's hanging open, waiting for you to push it on open and come on in. So come on, let's get together and let's go visit in the Lord. Let's go ask, seek, and, and, and knock on the door of the Lord. And quit beating ourselves up, trying to make it happen ourselves. And know, be still and know that he is Lord. And it is already taken care of if we will just have faith. Well, that's all I got for you today, folks. Because I know you need to go vote. Or if, you, if you've already voted, you need to go pray. You need to go pray and pray for our outcome. And pray that whatever the outcome is, God gives you peace in the outcome. So we, we're going to do that, but I'm going to ask that we, we pray together right now. Dear gracious Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for all of the circumstances that we encounter in our life. We must be grateful in everything. There is no man, woman, child, or circumstance that is bigger than you, Father. So let our faith carry us as we move forward, Father. This is a day like no other day I've seen in my life. And I don't think anybody on this little visit has before either, Father. So move your will forward. Because we need healing in this land. We don't need separation. We don't need definition, Father. We need healing. We need love. We need patience. We need empathy. We need care, Father. So if it be your will, Father, let us have a country that makes us stand and say, this is where I live. This is the land I love. This is a land where I can freely worship the Lord and I can see a reflection of God in my everyday ins and outs. But Lord, this thing we have now, Lord, I, I'm sorry. 
I carry you in my heart, but I can't see you in, in society. So I, I can see why you shut the doors. We need to come on in so we can reflect on you because we won't see it out in society. So, Father, let this day be a day that you make your voice heard. Whatever, whatever it is, let your voice be heard. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. Hey, folks, God bless you. God move you. God keep you. And all is well. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.